As a channel that mostly focuses on MMORPGs, it may be surprising to a lot of you that I've never made a video about one of the biggest upcoming Western MMOs, and that game is New World from Amazon Game Studios, which has recently been given a release date of May 2020, with the closed beta in April 2020. Recently, the New World team dropped a bunch of trailers, as well as a pretty big dev diary with a bunch of info about the game, so I'll play that video first, then I'll get into my thoughts about the game and talk more about it in depth towards the second half of the video. New World's an open world MMO set in an alternate version of the 17th century. It takes place on an island we call Eternal. It's a place of legend. It's a land of power and of treasure. It's a place where your choices matter. You get to live a life that is full of danger and adventure on a supernatural continent that has only just been discovered. We wanted to build this, this version of a haunted Eden. We wanted beautiful, picturesque landscapes with danger around every turn. There's these hints of supernatural and these things that show you you're not really anywhere you've ever seen before. Contrast is something that we really want players to feel as they move around the world. Every space they enter feels different and special from the space behind it. They feel like every hill they're going over, there's a new adventure. Not many people know too much about Eternum yet. I think that's where you come in as a player. And there are threats, but there's also opportunity. Rumors swirl about the power and danger of the island, but the people who go there don't really know what they're going to find. It could be Shangri-La, or it could be something out of their worst nightmares. The thing that gives Eternum this, this power and makes it supernatural and special is there's this mineral that runs below the earth and it's called Azoth, and it's known to have magical properties. Azoth can amplify things. Azoth itself is, is not really a good or bad necessarily, it's just this pure raw energy. Azoth has power to change things. It makes things more beautiful. And deadly. Azoth is different for everyone who sees it or knows about it. For some, it's the fountain of youth. For some, it's the philosopher's stone. For some, it's the living embodiment of God or the devil. But one thing's for sure is it gives you, the player, a lot of really interesting powers to play with. When players arrive in Eternum, they find evidence of other civilizations having been trapped there throughout history. The whole world is open to you, and you're only limited by your skill and the difficulty of the enemies that you run into. It's completely classless, so you choose how you want to play by choosing the equipment, and the weapons you choose also defines your play style. Players will have a lot of freedom to choose what they do and how they do it. One of the fundamental tenets of New World has always been autonomy, and that manifests in every single system in the game. The game adapts to the player and their play style. Want to become the best blacksmith or the best sword fighter. The progression system supports that. They just have to keep doing what they do best. There's multiple settlements all over the world and the corruption is always this invasive, aggressive force that's constantly trying to push back, trying to drive players out. The corrupted have massive armies growing in the north and some of their influences are beginning to trickle down to the south where players are trying to build their homes and they have a very particular idea of how the power of Eternum should be used. The world is gonna push back against you in, in a couple of interesting ways. For one thing, as you grow more powerful and you head deeper into the world, obviously there's gonna be resistance to come up and meet you. But one of the most exciting things about the game is that as you and other players begin to form settlements and you begin to push back the things in the woods, they'll come for you. You're gonna find some really interesting battles that have to get fought in order to keep your foothold in this world. 
So what exactly is New World? New World is an open world MMORPG with survival elements that's set in the time of 17th century colonization. This game is more of a sandbox MMO with an emphasis on crafting, a player driven economy, and banding together with other players to claim and capture land and build settlements with the game's conquest system. For fans of PvP, this will play a big part in New World with guild vs guild battles for up to 100 players. However, if that's not your cup of tea, in a recent in an interview it was said that PvP is now opt-in rather than something that's going to be forced on players. In terms of PvE, the game has bosses in the world that you'll need to group up with other players to kill, as well as a world that's general difficulty level is challenging enough that playing in a group is more beneficial and safe than playing solo. In a recent interview it was also said that quests have been added to the game, as well as a PvE defense type event called an invasion, where corrupt forces of the world attack player settlements and players need to defend against them. When it comes to server sites, it's said to currently be at 1000 players, however Amazon are trying to increase that number. Initially when this game was first announced, it was speculated that the game would be way more of a survival game than an MMO. With all the new information that's came out about it recently, now it seems to be way more of an MMORPG than a survival game. When it comes to combat, New World has what many have described as being a Souls-like combat system, which I find super super interesting as we've never had an MMO that's gone all the way with this type of combat before, so expect timing and skill to play a big role in both PvP and PvE. In terms of story and lore, we're essentially a group of settlers that have sailed to an island in the middle of the Atlantic called Eternum. This island contains a magical resource called Azoth, which has the power to grant eternal life or be used as a source of power. Unfortunately, this resource has a dark side and can both corrupt the environment or any creature that comes into contact with it. Something else we know about New World is that this game is purely developed for PC and not console. The reason for this is Amazon wanting to push the graphics as far as possible. Progression wise, New World has no classes, so in theory you could use whatever weapons you want. The game does however have a weapon mastery system, where the more you use a certain weapon, it levels up and has different skill trees associated with it. Aside from that, you also gain attribute points whenever you level up, and most of your gear upgrades will come from crafting or buying from another player. It's also said that unlike a lot of MMOs, in New World, if a player is 10 to 15 levels higher than you, you'll still be be able to kill them if you're really good at the game. Obviously, a level 50 has an advantage over a level 40, but it's not to the point where that advantage can't be overcome with skill. In general, New World definitely leans more in the direction of a game like EVE Online rather than a World of Warcraft, with a much larger focus on setting your own goals either solo or with a guild, and finding your place within the game's community. And although steps have clearly been taken to make the game a bit more solo friendly, you're going to want to join a guild to really get the most out of the game, as with any MMORPG really. I guess I should mention at this point that I've played New World on a few separate occasions already. Amazon flew me out to their studio to test and give feedback for the game in June 2018 and January 2019 along with a lot of other content creators. Something I can definitely say is Amazon have really been listening and implemented changes based on player feedback for a very long time throughout the development of New World and it's impressive that the lengths they've gone to and massive changes they've made based on that critique. When I first played New World, I really didn't like it and couldn't really see how it had become a good game. The second time I played it, however, I had a lot of fun and could definitely start to see the potential due to all the changes that were made based on feedback. At this point, I really think New World has a good chance of being a really fun MMO, especially for us PvP nuts. And personally, I plan on either joining or forming my own PvP guild for the game. I haven't had the chance to play it for a while, but as it's an Amazon game, you can expect to see some kind of Twitch integration, as well as pay to win being super unlikely due to it being buy to play on Steam, as well as it being Amazon Game Studios' first full game release. Overall, I'm actually quite optimistic about New World, and it's going to be interesting to see how popular the game will be, because we haven't really seen a super popular sandbox MMO with a lot of PvP elements in it yet. Although, if the game can manage to capture the survival 
game crowd as well as MMO fans as it seems to be trying to do, I think we could see quite a successful game with a good foundation to build upon with future content. But that's it for this video guys, let me know what you think of New World so far in the comments below. Is this a game you're hyped for? Have you had the chance to playtest it yet? And do you think it'll be successful? Let me know in the comments below. Additionally, feel free to follow me on social media. I mostly post on Instagram nowadays though, so follow me there. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.